Hello, I'm Marcus and in this video I'm going to try to give you some simple checks to make when choosing a piano. Now the first thing we do when we're choosing a piano to buy so that we can restore and sell is to check the tone around the, the main playing area, so that's around here. So playing it loud and as loud as possible to see if the sound carries across the soundboard or whether it's rather dull and also whether it's patchy. Now next, if you play all the notes through starting at the bottom, make sure that none of them are really out of tune and also listen to the sound while you're playing them. So we want to make sure that none of them is very out of tune. Again, play them reasonably loud. Right through to the top. Now of course these pianos are, are being, in, being tuned, they're in our main showroom and uh, they're ready for people to try. Well, those were grand pianos, the same goes for upright pianos of course. So you play loud in the middle section, that's where you mostly play, so that's the most important. Of course all the piano is important, but that's where you're going to hear most of the melody. And this Yamaha here, slightly brighter. Now, um, it's personal taste whether you want a bright or mellow sound, it should be even. And uh, it, you want to make sure it's a nice full sound as well. Now, really important too is touch weight. If you're si practicing seriously, you don't want it to be too light. This is 48 grams, and this 48 grams is one of our preferred new pianos. We've also refined it um, a little bit on touch weight to make it just a slightly more even, though 4 is already pretty even. Uh, that's 48 grams, which is slightly lighter than average. 4 set it at 48 grams, or uh, 48, 49 grams, plus or minus 2 grams normally is the accuracy which you can do it within. So that one's slightly heavier, you can just tap it a little bit underneath the piano and it goes down. So 48 grams, as I say slightly lighter, that is slightly lighter isn't it than 48 grams, so plus or minus 2 grams will be acceptable. If you don't have professional touch weights, this is five one pound coins with a 20 pence piece. That's 48.75 grams. And uh, as it goes down obviously slightly more easily because it's slightly heavier. But that would be an acceptable touch weight. 50 grams is often quoted as the, 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 the touch weight in the middle. 48 grams at the top and 52 grams in the base. So anything sort of uh, around that area is, is acceptable. Uh, plus or minus two. Obviously, the more refined, the better. M the more refined you can make it, the better. And this is all. These are all going down at 58.75. That one's slightly heavier, if anything. So just tap it a bit, and it goes down. So using this 58.75 on the night, that's going down. So that's slightly lighter. That one too, and that one is very light. So that's really too light, and we're going to have to weigh the key. So we do that. Uh, before we sell this piano, obviously we're going to get the weight as even as possible. The down weight on this here is about 44 grams, which is too light. Um, so there's inconsistency here, which we're going to obviously sort out. I think that sharp's probably heavier. So this sharp's 51 grams, so 51 grams, 44 or so is, is too much discrepancy. So that we will even out before the piano is delivered to the client. If you're thinking of buying an older piano like this 1924, Luthner upright, then uh, again if you look at our common makes page you'll see which makes we recommend and there's likely to be more work needing to be done. This one's been fully restored uh, and the, the tone in the middle is just very lush as you get with older pianos. This piano is Marshall and Rose, it's less expensive than the Blutner. Uh, it came in past exchange, the client had used it for many, many years but decided to upgrade to a Steinway, so we got this one. And Marshall and Rose is a, is a respected make in the trade. So that's the test we used to start with, the middle t area, but the touch and, uh, as again we were talking about the tuning, 
I'm just going to look at some pianos now which uh, um, need more work. I'm now in our storage area where we put pianos when we take them in past exchange. We also have some storage pianos for clients. Um, this one on the left, for instance, is one that we took in past exchange, trying to, to see what to do with it. It does have problems and I'm going to try and show you some of them and uh, it's kind of things to avoid when buying a piano really. Now we talked about the tone in the middle. No, no that, that really isn't... You may not be able to hear us on the video, but it doesn't really travel um, across the soundboard. That's a bit dead. And there too. But there are other problems on this piano as well. Now it's a Bechstein Model 5 made in 1891. And uh, the problems, as I've mentioned in other videos with this piano, where we've replaced the rest bank behind here. So this has been restrung, reconditioned. Um, and generally, I think the work's been quite well done. So it's a shame because the tuning pins are loose. If you put a tuning lever on these, they don't all hold. And that's a common problem. And there's one string missing here. These strings are a bit patchy as well. So it's one that we won't be able to take on. Not sure what we're going to do with it because there are aspects that are very good on the piano. But because of those things, and we obviously don't want to sell a piano where it goes out of tune. So you have to be very careful. My advice um, really is to get a, a piano tune or uh, at best, a piano tuner technician. If you don't have access to one, a piano teacher who might help you to um, be able to choose a piano, but it's very difficult when it comes to this kind of thing. It has a more obvious example, the piano that we're going to tip. Um, I've got the front off this piano already. It's a Blutner. It was a, a player piano. You can see where the piano player mechanism has been taken out, and you can see signs of it having been one, with these gaps here. Um, and we wouldn't normally take one of those on for cosmetic reasons. But it too has a rather thin tone round here. I say in the main playing area, this is usually the giveaway area. Very thin indeed at that point. And to do with the soundboard usually, it uh, could be the down bearing. Um, and it also has another problem if we listen to the notes being played through. So that one there, there's three strings. And one of those three strings is very out of tune. The middle one. And that's because the tuning pin is loose, I'm, I'm sure about that. It's quite common on this style of Blutner to get loose tuning pins. So you do need a technician to help you when it comes to, especially with older pianos. So it has a potentially very good tone, but uh, I think with the soundboard problems, probably we would not attempt it to, to, to take it on at all. Here's a Wellmar, which is definitely one of our preferred makes. It's usually very consistent, but this one, has a very thin sound again. That note's all right, but... And so again, we wouldn't take that piano on either. This is a Chalon, very common English piano. Again, if you look at our common makes from the UK, you'll find this is one of the most common ones. And a terrible tone here, also out of regulation. So this is an ex-school piano, which we wouldn't take on anyway. Very thin sounding. Bass has potential, but uh, you can't do anything really about this mid-tone, which is the most important area. Finally, the make of the piano is really important. If you go onto our website and look at the Common Makes in the UK page, you'll see many makes that we've listed there uh, with a rough um, rating of each one. Uh, so that should be helpful. Bursendorf was one of our really preferred makes of piano, and this is a fully restored Bursendorfer. We'll just have a quick listen to that. So very even tone. And uh, for the length of the piano, it's 170 centimetres long, has a really rich bass as well. So I hope that's been helpful, uh, trying to show you ways that we choose a piano, things that we look at, which I hope will help you to choose a piano as well. Uh, now first of all, it was the touch round here, sorry, the tone nice and rich and warm and then the general tuning we check every note on the piano all the way up and of course the tone on the piano as well right through out the middle area here is most important but the tenor is really important as well
Now, there's many other things to look for. I didn't mention woodworm, for instance, which is another thing that you, you've got to check the piano for. And also moth. You can often see moth in the felt behind here, but underneath the keys, it's very common to get moth, even in modern pianos. So that needs checking. So really, I think, in summary, you really need uh, a piano tuner technician to go with you when you tune a piano. Cho sorry, choose a piano. If that's not possible, then um, we've got plenty of videos that might help you. Um, if you look at them, you might build an idea up an idea of what to look for in a piano. Um, if you go to our website, robertspianos.com, you'll also see lots of information about different makes in the UK. Thank you very much for listening.